This video will discuss how to compute bond lengths inside of molecules. So let's say we have a hydrogen fluoride molecule. So in my XYZ file, the atom records would be indicated like this. So I might have the fluorine, its X, Y, and Z coordinates uh, indicated here, the hydrogen with its X, Y, Z coordinates indicated here. And so we want to find the distance uh, between these two points, which would be the definition of the bond length, the distance between these two points. These points are what we're using to represent our two uh, atom locations. So the distance between two points, well, that's just determined by the Pythagorean theorem. So this distance we'll call RHF, some bond length R. So first we're going to compute uh, in two dimensions, Pythagorean theorem. So we have the dis difference between them in X. So this is atom two, this is atom one. X two minus X one is their difference in the X direction, delta X. Y two minus Y one is their difference in the Y direction, delta Y. So we have those two. Then this quantity called H, which is the distance between them in the XY plane, labeled H because I'm calling it the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we have H is going to be equal to the square root of delta X squared plus delta Y squared. Hypotenuse is uh, the two sides squared, add those up, and then take the square root. Okay, so H is their distance in the XY plane. Then we go from the XY plane, uh, adding Z as we go there. So the bond distance here, R is the hypotenuse and H and Delta Z are the two sides where Delta Z is Z two minus Z one, their difference in the Z direction. Okay. So now I have the full uh, length. It's going to be the square root of H squared plus Delta Z squared. So if I substitute in the value of H here, when I have the bond length for my final bond, the length or bond length or distance between any two atoms, I and J, where I and J are just indices, you know, one through N, if I have N atoms, RIJ, it's going to be the square root of XJ minus XI squared, delta X, plus YJ minus YI squared, delta Y, again, squared plus ZJ minus ZI quantity, once again, squared. So in each case, um, we have a square quantity. So this is a real number squared is going to be a positive number, positive number, positive number. Adding three positive numbers is going to give us a positive number. Taking the square root of a positive number, we're gonna take the positive result. So this means that our bond length has to be some non-negative number. So if two atoms are at the same location, their bond length is zero. If they are infinitely far apart, their bond length is infinity. And all bond lengths are going to fall somewhere in between those two extremes. So if we do some numerical examples on the one that we have just looked at, RFH, so we take X2 minus X1, X2 minus X1, there we go, substitute those in. Y2 minus Y1, they're the same in this case, so this term is gonna give us a zero. Z2 minus Z1, substitute in those two values there. Then we square, uh, take the difference and square each of those values, so we get 0 0.93919 squared plus zero squared plus zero squared. These two terms don't contribute anything, so we're just taking the square root of this number squared, which is gonna give us that the bond length in this case between fluorine and hydrogen is 0 0.939 angstroms. So in this case, the bond length for a diatomic molecule is the only internal degree of freedom we have. We can translate the molecule to the left, up or down, inside or outside the plane, we can rotate it in two different ways, but the only way we can change the internal structure is by changing this bond length. So as an example, let me bring up VMD. So I'm gonna bring up the display. When you bring up VMD, you get three windows. We get the main display, the menu, and then this kind of uh, TCL terminal. This one I'm not really concerned with. I'm gonna minimize that. So I'm gonna load this file that I have 
of just a vibrating bond. So I'm going to browse for new molecule. This is going to be carbon monoxide.cl. Need to get my menu back, my file browser. Okay, so I got the file name there, and I'm going to click load. It's going to load all the frames from this animation. All right, and right now I can't see anything, and that's because the molecule is facing right towards me. So I'm going to click and drag and rotate this. And also, I don't like this type of representation, so let me see. I don't really like this representation, so I'm going to do another representation. I'm going to go to Graphics, Representation. I'm going to go to CPK. Nice uh, ball and stick model. That'll show up our uh, difference there. When you first bring this up, these are going to be fairly low resolution. They're going to look something like this. And I'm going to increase the resolution on the spheres and the bonds until they're both in the 30s. Then I'm pretty high resolution there. And now what I'm going to do is I have this full trajectory of 159 kind of snapshot frames of these XYZ coordinates. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to click play on that. And what you have here is the vibrations of the bond. So here we're not rotating, we're not translating, it's only the bond length which is changing. And during the course of a typical bond vibration, as we'll see in some later chapters, we get this kind of sinusoidal oscillation in our bond length as we go.